Chan. Do you know that you're the first mm -hmm. RJ on Jam with Sam? Woohoo! Yes. Tell us briefly about your childhood and you're a Mumbai girl. Yes. Tell us. I was born in King Circle. I am a Matunga product. I, I was just telling somebody I'm my Tamil is terrible. But my Gujarati is way better than my Hindi, is way better, way better than my uh, Tamil. And so my Marathi, Gujarati and Hindi are way better than Tamil. the other languages I should be speaking. Yeah. Yeah. At least I don't know Tamil at all. So that's at least better <laughs> over there. Okay, so uh, how was your school and college life spent? You did your graduation in St. Xavier's yes. and your PG in Communications and Media Studies. What yes. was the learning from your school and college? <sighs> that it is just a degree. Yes. And, you know, there's nothing else to it. It's just a formality. You get done with it. But I think what I learned at school and college was everything else that I'm doing today is everything I didn't study for. So I'm a, in, I'm a master's in English literature and I run a Hindi Bollywood show uh, where, <laughs> where we're encouraged, you know, not to speak in Hindi, uh, in English at all. Uh, in the beginning of my, uh, my, my stint on the air, I remember all the Hindi that I knew was, it was so town and it was so by a taxi broko. And then until, you know, <laughs> and then until becoming one of the taxi walas, machi walas, because, you know, that's how you interface with your city and you have to be a voice of the city and they'll only listen to you if you talk to them in their language, right? Uh, so I think that was the biggest learning for me. So you did your, I mean, English literature. I mean, what did, I mean, how, what made you, I mean, you were going for a separate career or something? Oh, or no, no. I just think that it comes with the territory of being South Indian. Like, you have to be an MA uh, or a master's. Like, MA phir bhi niche hai. You have to be an M Phil, you know, or you have to be an M something else. So you have to be, actually, you have to be a PhD. And I, at some point, will go, go out there and pursue my PhD, that's for sure. Mm. Because I'm just a very curious sort of learning, sort of that sort of person. I love experiences. I think one of the biggest advantages of being here today is to meet different people. Because, you know, you can get so jaded even within the media space because you're constantly meeting only media people. Mm. And there's a certain sort of fatigue to that as well. Uh, but it is so refreshing to meet people from different varied backgrounds because I speak to people from varied backgrounds and if I don't understand them, if I don't know where they are, uh, like, so that, that motivates me a lot. Fantastic. Okay, we have some fun time. Yes. If you were the CEO of a company, name one thing that you'd make compulsory in your office and one thing you would banish from your office. Oh, fab. I would definitely banish meetings uh, because I just don't think you need meetings. Just whatever you have to say to each other, just say it on like WhatsApp and let's just be, you know, you know trustworthy of each other. <laughs> Because meetings are just so, I mean, at least in the space that I work in, meetings are like, yeah, our meeting. Hai. <laughs> like, you know, it's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, one thing I'll make compulsory is, uh, is period leave. Like if, if female uh, employees would like to get menstruation days off, like even one day off, I think it would really be amazing. In fact, in my office, uh, one of the guys in his teams, he always says, if you're not feeling up to it today, just take it off and we won't mark it as a leave. Okay. And I think that's so wonderful. So, yeah. Fantastic. What animal you think will make the best president if the animal kingdom ever rises up and takes over? What is this question? <laughs> Who do you think I am? I'm sorry. I I ask these questions on my show to people. I am totally no, no, thrown no, off. No, 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 no prompting. Huh? Fox. A fox, fox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. No, I mean, it would be president. Yeah. When you're president, you don't do anything. <laughs> so I, I think sloth. Sloth, okay. To chill, to bad. Bad, okay. What would your autobiography be called? Oh, God. The girl who said too much. The girl who said too much, okay. Yeah. Good. Pass. Not talk too much because there's said a difference. Too, said, said too much. Too much. Okay. Yeah. Your corporate life. You started with Fever 104 from 2006 to 2008. That's what LinkedIn says. That was your first job. And how did you get selected? I mean, 
Did okay. anything your studies get yeah, to yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, there's a fun story. I okay. think everybody should know. I mean, I I did my uh, I actually didn't do my MA before that. I did my graduation in English and then I went on to study post, you know, social communications media. It's like a postgraduate diploma. It's one of the finest courses for media in our city. At that point it was only girls and it was a very it was a media course with a social conscience and mm -hmm. the very few media courses do that because um, you know like our teachers were P Sainath and Jerry Pinto and Naresh Fernandez and these are Smriti Gopi and these are people who we look up to in the media space and they always left us you know saying that whenever you're representing uh, yourself or you're representing any field please think of it from a holistic point of view like please ask questions don't blindly you know you know push ad agendas and I think that was the biggest learning from that course then I, I basically I walked out of that media school saying I want to be a documentary filmmaker and yeah. I'm going to change the world because that's how we're all right we're idealists we all get out saying with the spire in our belly and no money in our pocket and then sure enough I walked out and I I said, I want to make a documentary film and I did make my documentary film. It's called, it was a Marathi documentary film. Mm. It's called Kahani Amsa Paniachi, uh, which is the water problems in Maharashtra. So for like six months, you know, me and a small crew who I kind of got together, we would go and like, you know, live in the villages and understand why there is such a drought in Maharashtra. Uh, when we have SL world between Mumbai and the village mm. and it just doesn't make sense. Uh, it was it was a great exercise for me personally to understand and to interface with people who are not like me and I think that's very important to me. I love meeting people who are not like me so that I can understand my privileges or my, you know, or my lack of privilege. And then uh, this film got made and then I was like, oh God, this film has got made and Abito Matlab Brokesh what has happened. Uh, need to make some money. Uh, luckily at that point the UN bought the film and oh. uh, they started taking it to villages and even now it gets shown across villages because it's about how do you build your own water resources instead of waiting for the government to build you something because when the government builds you something you don't take ownership. Mm. So what happens effectively is all the water sources start denigrating and breaking down and you have no control on the make of it. So if they build their own things, so it was amazing, uh, but no money at the end of it in terms of personally. So then I said, oh God, I need a job. And that was a hard negotiation with myself. And then I remember because I was into film and the sensibility with cinema, uh, the only logical approach at that time was to do television. But I remember at that point, television was just Ekta Kapoor. And I'm talking early 2000s. And I was like, I can't be part of this product at that point because I, I just didn't think that my sensibilities would match. Um, and then suddenly, Somebody called me and said out of the blue, like one of my batchmates, she said, you know, you are like so good at presenting and she, I used to be a host for things. She said, there's a radio station opening up and this was phase two in Indian private FM. So that's also an interesting sort of thing to know about radio. There are like now there's been phase three. Mm. Every time there's a phase, there's an auction, you come out, uh, somebody spent a lot of money buying some frequencies because radio is a very, very high uh, investment business. Uh, most of the media companies are the ones who invest in radio anyway because buying FM frequency is, uh, it's licensed by the government. So yeah. you, you don't really buy it, you just license it. And uh, so the phase two happened and there was a new radio station opening up. It was called Fever Exochat. And uh, I went in there to apply for the post of a producer because I said, I don't want to do anything with a visual medium. I would rather use my craft in the audio medium. So I joined them as a producer and my, my then boss, my now boss, it's amazing how life comes full circle. I'm working with him again uh, for, an other, for another radio station now. Uh, uh, he, uh, he had me like around and I used to be the same person. Like, you know, if I, if I knew something, if I had an idea, I would just share it with him. And at one point he was just like, you should go on it. And then I said, oh yeah, they'll put me in some graveyard shift, you know, like bara se char raat ko karayenge. Like, you know, they'll get some cheap labor and all. I was being so like uh, cocky about it. And then I was offered uh, the evening drive, which is, you know, when you guys drive back, back home, home. Uh, we get to talk to you. And I was paired with another DJ so that I don't feel lost. Uh, and I don't have to take complete responsibility. So I think that was a really great, smooth sort of welcome to the medium. Okay. And then you went to 93.5, Red yeah. FM, where you had multiple roles. Yes. So what all did you do? I think there were three roles you were doing during the day. I think I was, I was the show producer and hmm. I was a radio DJ. Hmm. Uh, and outside of that, I was just uh, 
like a friend to people like you know so that's why i mean it, basically to me the medium of radio is is really exciting because it's a very underrated medium yeah. um, and i keep telling you know people who want to invest in radio because it's such a beautiful mass medium and it really reaches so many so many people and it's it's an fir medium if something goes wrong in the city the first person to yeah. tell you about it is the radio, radio. jockey yesterday was chat puja at ju beach who will tell you about it like a radio jockey yeah. and these are like news you can use and i think that to me is a very amazing live quality of radio uh before twitter actually radio has always played that role yes. twitter does it now and twitter does it brilliantly and we work in sync with twitter because mm. we get all our updates from that uh so i think the just that that sort of live uh, factor of the medium just excites me a lot and i will do anything on the radio so i will uh, make a voice uh, i will write a sweeper write a promo and i and i love that because when and the next question will be when you move to singapore because you know singapore was a different experience because yahan par we are really spoiled we have a a battery of producers and we have a lovely big team we're so spoiled with all the people who work with us and it's a wonderful sort of like a, a team experience cool. yeah. yeah but singapore i will tell you about so between fever 104 and red fm yes. what is the difference one difference between both the companies companies um in terms How? of freedom in terms of you know were there any limitations in both the companies no they're just different brands hmm. so when the brands when the brands are different and the brand values are different hmm. uh then it is you're doing the same job but you're keeping in mind what the brand values are okay. so i think you know fever x char has always been about entertainment hmm. and to me entertainment is you know the first sort of priority and that's great because you know i i think stan lee you know the yes, creator yeah. of spider man uh he passed on last night yeah. two nights ago yeah. and uh, one of his quotes said that if you can you know i used to look at my peers and they used to be engineers and doctors and they were changing the world with their skills and uh, i was his guy drawing these cartoons you know so i thought i would never match up to my peers and then he says that but i found out that entertaining someone is in its own way a, a really big gift yes. and i think that is the philosophy of the company that i work in right now and i think that's really great fantastic you then shifted gears i mean you went 32000 feet and joined media corp in 2013 yes. you were one of the first indian origin person to win two honors from media corp so yes. one of the first indian origin in singapore and that was in the year you landed over there yes. tell us something about it yeah what a like yeah really uh it was a very great sort of uh, welcome to singapore because when you're doing radio radio is all about the local sort of space around you right and you can't fake it like you know agar yahan par aakar koi kahin bahar se koi radio jockey aakar like give me a, the name of a road pedal road ko paada road bolega <laughs> so instantly you as the city inhabitant know that this person doesn't know your city mm. so you know what i'm saying like you'll have uski koi validity nahi rehti uske baad so the same thing happened to me i went to singapore and i really didn't know the roads and i didn't know because as i said it's such a city medium you have to understand like what the city layout is and it takes time you can't fake it because radio is such a beautiful medium that even though they can't see you it's very transparent yeah. like I, i you know it's such an irony because it's a paradox actually because you're just like wow how does that happen uh so i went there and then i didn't know but then i had to make friends instantly on the air because uh one of the greatest things about radio is that even though they can't see you uh mm. you get confessions you you get a lot of love uh people want to marry you uh it's <laughs> fabulous you get offers uh you get gifts So but it takes time because again it's a relationship right yeah. like how do you make a relationship face to face that is hard enough how do you make a relationship with someone who can't see you mm. or who you can't see so that took a while and then singapore was amazing because i i kind of changed my approach in bombay i was the girl who was born of this street so nobody knew this city better than me i still believe that uh but when i went there i said hey guys I actually don't know Singapore so would you help me do that wow. and I think that was one of the things that really worked because as uh, you know uh, our friend said just some time ago that being authentic in today's time really helps and it was a lesson for me because the minute you drop your guard and make your vulnerability mm. uh, your strength the world will come to help you so that's very good so what's the difference between radio in Singapore and radio in India Ah it's expat radio it's nri radio so you're dealing with a bunch of indians who have moved outside of india 
probably in the 60s or the 70s uh, because, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, and they have an idea of India, right? So it's a nostalgia. So I actually, it was the best move for me because to me, again, the medium is so precious that the, the more I can do with it, uh, mm -hmm. to me, that's, that's the gift. So going there was like starting from scratch. Now what will you play for them? And then I realized the love they have for retro as a medium because retro music was not something that I had personally experienced. And I think retro music is a very personal experience. Like you can't, uh, if you don't like it, you can't serve it. You know, so it's very simple because you're dealing with people's likes and dislikes since like you know, the 70s or since mm. the 80s. Uh, so I think that was a gift for me because mm. the audience is a lot more, lot, things are a lot more dearer. Hindustan ko utna farag nahi padega. Deep Veer ke shaadi ke baare mein, which is today, by the way, Ranveer yes, Singh yes. and Deepika uh, Padukone have gotten married. Did we know? Perhaps not because we are in Bombay. We don't care because uh, we are the Deepika and Ranveers of our own lives, guys. Mm. And that's true. Bombay is that amazing city. We are the heroes of our own stories. There, it was wonderful because they really feel a lot for their stars. Like, and it, it made me change my perception. So I think that was great to understand people outside India. Okay. So finally got back to India and you are with RJ Nasha the, for the last two years. Yes. So tell us about that. that. Oh God, yeah. How did you come back? Why I did you come back? Singapore is such a beautiful city. Yeah, it was. It's a very fine city. Yeah. They find you for everything. They find you for everything, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's crazy because, you know, I don't know if you know the Kahani where Dronacharya asks, Ek love your finger. Yeah. You know, it's the same story. The boss who hired me into radio, uh, you know, called me one day and said, Kya kar rahi ho, yaar? <laughs> And I said, Aray, aish kar rahi ho aur kya? You know, I'm. I, it, because also, the other, the other thing I probably didn't mention is that in India we have so many X number of radio stations, right? There, there is not a radio station, there is a three hour slot. Oh. So the entire city country, which is Singapore, listens to one radio jockey. Okay, and so you can you imagine how quick you can be like a local celebrity and also in Singapore, which is a very small place, you don't have a film industry, okay, you don't have uh, a television industry, which is not that, it's, it's, pro it's prominent, uh, but the biggest stars in Singapore are the radio stars, because the radio DJ is there, oh my God, like I learned so much just observing them, being in their natural habitats, like, you know, I'm sure if a few of you like uh, top 40 English music, yes. there used to be one of the most famous countdowns in, a, a, in America, which is KCK. KCK. Kesem's Kesem. top 40. Yeah. Uh, so Casey Kesem's son, Mike Kesem, shared the corridor, you know, with us. So oh. just in terms of like just learning from each other, it was just amazing. Uh, so uh, my boss called and said, "Kya kar rahi ho? kar rahi ho? yaar, ye sab wo maya hai. Wapas aajao. Apne desh se kitne dur rahogi?" <laughs> Literally, this is how he spoke to me. And I was like, "Is this a serious conversation?" And he said, "Yes. There is a radio station that we're launching, and trust me." It's a radio station that you would love to actually listen to. And I said, really? Now that's interesting. And he said, yes, it's a music that you grew up on. It's the music that you can serve. And that's how Radio Nasha was born. Uh, it serves the music of the 70s, 80s and 90s. Radio is a habit, okay? Yani ke ab you know, people in our generation, uh, you know that your kids don't grow up on radio. You know, they have different gadgets, different devices. So I would say that this is truly what radio is at or where it's at right now, where you're, if you're a radio listener, you're really happy, you know, because you're getting the music you always want to listen to. Okay. So while doing radio, there are many other things you did. Like I got like, like, yeah, yeah I'm a bit link. of a butterfly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what are three things you did while doing all this stuff? I, I got an MA degree. So that was, I think, one of the best things I did. Uh, the first two years in radio, low stakes in terms of, you know, you're not responsible for too many things. Go in there, learn. So it was, a, it was absolutely just being student life. Uh, so it kind of gave me time to actually study at the same time. So I did my MA, so I did that. Um, I think theatre has been something that's been very dear to me. Uh, if not watching, then once in a while, just dabbling and going mm -hmm. and doing mm -hmm. one production okay. uh, in some capacity. So uh, I wouldn't call myself an actor because I have too many friends who are actors and I see the effort that they put in. So I'm just a, a wannabe. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, I, I guess it also gives me a chance to 
host for causes that are dear to me. Like I would, if I have a little bit of uh, a little bit of value, if people call me to things, uh, then I'd like to push agendas. And if you're not you're not a creator, if you don't have an agenda, you need to have an agenda. Okay. And you are also LGBTQ champion. Yes. You've been awarded the Cura Award last year as an ally to the LGBTQ. Yes. Q has been added. Now there's an I also. Huh? The ones, next year you see all alphabets LGBTQ will take. Okay. A, B, C, D, LGBTQ, S, X, Y, Z. Yeah. Okay. So tell us something about it. Why, why, um, why the champion? You know, it just, it just so happened that uh, at the time when nobody wanted to talk about LGBTQ rights uh, on radio for some reason, uh, I didn't think of it as doing something different actually because I had always had friends, I had always had interactions uh, with people from the LGBTQI community. And to me, it wasn't a big deal. I was just interviewing people like they were people. Uh, what I realized later was I was made to feel Oh wow! Thanks, Rohini. You've done you know this for us. You've created this mm. space for us. Mm. And then, of course, a lot of you know people started having these conversations on radio. So I it, it happened really organically because once you, if you can't see the difference, uh, you can't call yourself really a champion, mm. I guess. Mm. Uh, so then through that, I realized that the LGBTQI community. Okay, right now we're in the year when three seven seven has been thrown off. You know, mm. which is great, but. Until now, can you imagine the plight of people who were born in, uh, you know, who are 50 years old and they had no right to actually yeah. express their love or get married. I mean, to me, it's just you can't take away somebody's choice as a government. I think that is too important to me. And yeah, that's what that was, was something that really bothered me. Um, so I work with the community in a very small capacity. I have friends who do a lot more. But there is a film festival called Kashish, Kashish. Uh, that I, you know, I do anything for. But one of the greatest things I do for them is I host their opening night. And it is an absolute spectacle. So, you know, dress up, drama, drag, all of it. Yeah. And it's, it's very fun and it happens. It'll happen in June next year. So I guess... Uh, just sometimes when you're entertaining people and they think you're worthy of an award for the entertainment, this is what that was. Cool. Okay, couple of controversial questions. Are women artists paid lesser than the male counterparts? Is it only in India or abroad also? Are you talking in radio? Radio. Uh, we've had the, the opportunity to really, you know, I mean, honestly, radio is such a gender neutral medium mm. that you're not made aware that you're a woman versus television. See, yeah. I'm also giving you references and mm. points of reference because let's look at the other medium okay on if i had to be on television i would have to be 15 kilos lighter okay i would have to be very unhappy and not eat anything <laughs> okay because my car are, i was eating right now also you know not because i love love to eat but because the the medium demands that of you and you have yeah. to look a certain way i go to work in pajamas okay i only dress up in the evening i get to work at 6 45 a.m okay it's very hard um, and they allow me to take meetings in mm. pajamas. Pajama. It's amazing. Okay. Uh, and that's been the grace of this medium for me. So, um, yes, it's a gender neutral medium. It's what you say versus who you are. So Totally. So, ra radio is primarily heard in the car. So, do you think that video will ever kill the radio star? That's interesting because now I think with the private taxis, radio has come back mm. uh, and it's so interesting because I love the interface of radio with technology because technology was what radio was built on. Mm. Uh, either you bought a radio set, but then, you know, remember the phones that came in which had inbuilt radio? Yeah, yeah. And that was how I listened to radio when I was in college because I used to love Jagutarana. You know, we used to listen to them on, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and that's a very, very fond memory. Then suddenly, of course, of course, the smartphones have kind of like, you know, taken over. But guess what? The smartphones and the number of cars have increased. So mm. where does that leave? Because you, you only, you can't look at numbers in isolation. You have to look at numbers with respect to what else is happening. Number of cars have increased. Number of private taxis have increased. Um, I don't, it's amazing. I think one of my favorite moments is always getting into a cab and it's a private taxi so they can see my name and then after five minutes he'll keep looking at the window <laughs> at, the, at the mirror and then he'll be like Aapi, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I'll be like huh and then, yeah, main hu. okay let's let's finish because you know because as a local uh, voice you are uh, your, your your I mean your biggest fan base is your taxi drivers your biggest mm. biggest fan base are uh, people who run stores 
Oh, okay. Uh, but it's it's a wonderful kick to know that the car is such a beautiful sort of vehicle, right? In terms of, I'm using vehicle as a different word. Because it's a vehicle for the CEO as well as the driver. Driver, sure. And to me, that is a beautiful sort of bridge between these two uh, sort of classes, if you may say. And if you can be relevant to both, uh, which is a very, very hard thing to do, uh, yeah. then you are a good radio jockey. Very nice. Very well. Very well done. Was the repeal of Section 377 too late? And when do you think India is going to be truly international in terms of LVGDQI <sighs> rights? Oh, uh, I think we're already getting there. Hmm. First thing that the LGBTQ uh, like the section has been repealed is insane. Like, you know, I never thought, honestly, that this will happen in Hindustan. Okay, hmm. to be honest, hmm. number one. But number two, I was speaking to my friend Harish here, who is an activist. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he does uh, so many things. And he was telling me that, it's not it's not been too late because it was never ours mm. as in as if you look at just what india has been and why do we look at india only since independence india is way bigger than that it lasts way longer than that uh, it was an alien concept to actually do that to people which is to segregate on the basis of what they liked uh, so I think that it, it is a very British concept, it came oh. in. So kicking it out was only getting rid of the colonial, colonial. sort of hangover. Mm. And now, honestly, we've gone back to being what true India was. Yes. So I thought that was a very sort of great perspective because let's not think of it as... Uh, because a lot of people say, right, that if you're gay, uh, it's a Western influence. Hai. Mm. And I've actually heard this, you know. So And I feel bad about it because it just means that we're ignorant mm. about... Uh, sort of, you know, predispositions that we, we do not or cannot control, so. Okay. What do you feel about same-sex couple adopting kids? Ah, well, um, a lot of heterosexual people don't want their own babies. Mm. I think it's a great sort of product chain, you know. Okay, fine. So, this quote has been said by someone, Feminism has nothing to do with rich versus poor, privilege versus the needy, it is about breaking in an existing and internalized power structure that allows disrespect in, disrespect in any form towards women. Yes, so that's me. Good. That's you. Uh, and I got a lot of flack for this quote because, you know, a lot of people turn around and said, uh, no, feminism or inequality is also a class thing. Um, I don't really agree to that. I think it is your own internal sort of uh, willingness because I see people at various spaces and in, in, in various spaces in society. And I've, I've always believed that it doesn't have anything to do with the rich or the poor. Like, you know, being liberal is, is something that, is, I don't know where it comes from, you know. But I think it was a privilege for me to grow up in my house without ever having to think that yeah. I was a girl. Like, like the same way I'm on radio, I don't think that I'm a woman. Uh, and I think that's a privilege, yeah. And I think if we've grown up like that, we should always like totally. cherish that. Totally. So. You also do fun stuff. You hosted Shah Rukh Khan's birthday party last year. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are the fun stuff you did? I tell you, if Shah Rukh Khan, you know, I learned this from Shah Rukh Khan. Shah Rukh Khan was the guy who said that I will do anything for money. I will dance in someone's wedding. So when I got the chance to host Shah Rukh Khan's birthday, why would I make it? And also, oh, no, to, be, to be very honest, it was an honour. Uh, because it is the most media attended event. Mm. The media loves to be there. Okay? And honestly, it's a great party. I have not had so much khana at anybody's shadi also. My God. <laughs> oh, like the amount of stalls, like these are things that I love, okay? And I was like, Pani Puri wala hai. And I'm totally forgetting that, hey guys, I'm on stage and all. I'm like, Pani Puri is there. <laughs> and then at, at some point, of course, and he does, he did these amazing things. He basically um, organized a fan meet. And you know, you won't believe, fans from 50 countries flew down for that party. Oh. So to me, uh, again, it's about that curiosity to know. To, I got to know Shah Rukh Khan a little more, hmm. you know, by being there that day. Because the way he values his, his fans, I haven't seen anybody else doing it. So one of the things which I liked about his daughter was in the news recently about complexion. The dusky you know, complexion. You know, that quote has been uh, misquoted. Hmm. Because everyone said that she's beautiful, but hmm. she's dusky, but beautiful. Hmm. Um, he can't say that. Oh. I mean, I know that personally oh. because he's too smart a person. Um, and uh, it's and beautiful. And beautiful. Yeah. So media. Yeah, so this you, fake news. Yeah. news. I know. You acted in a play called as... Bayan. 
Bayan Aquarius. Bayan is a play that I do with a bunch of girls. Uh, they're all very accomplished actors. There's Taira Nath, there's Shriya Palgaukar, there's Shikha Talsanya, Dilshad. Uh, I mean, there's Prerna Chawla, Pritika Chawla. I, I just love these girls. They're literally some of the finest actors on the theatre on the theater front, be it digital or theatre itself. And I am literally like the non-actor there. Okay. So I'm, I'm the, the, the least accomplished actor in that lot. But those girls are so much fun. And I really am grateful to the producer who's AK Various, Akarsh Khurana. He made a film called Karma recently. He mm. directed that. Mm. Uh, and it was amazing because he just thought of this sort of fun mix of women. And they're all pieces, you know, most of them, they're monologues or dialogues between women only. Mm. And it's this 45 minute power packed sort of laugh off your seat. Uh, sort of a uh, fun sort of supper theatre concept and we will bring it to you at some point. So please watch it. Absolutely. So QSQT, anybody who knows what's QSQT? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So only five people said that, you know, like. So well, Rohini organized a 30 year reunion of QSQT this year and got a Sri Devi mural painted in the city in a memory in August. Yes. So, I mean, these are all things that my radio station enables me to do. I think one of the biggest uh, reasons why I do what I do is because I'm really passionate about um, cinema. Like, I love the movies and I don't love it in terms of just which movie dekhni hai. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a nerd. I'm still a South Indian about it. So I will read up. Uh, I will interview. I will watch stuff. Uh, and I love stories about stories. So just that, I think when, when we realize as a team that Kayamat se Kayamat tak, uh, if it was one of your favorite movies, it completed 30 years this year and that's how old we all are. <laughs> so, let's take a moment for that to sink in guys. Yeah, Amir feels even older. Like I can tell you that. He's like 30 years, yeah, 30 years, I can't believe it. <laughs> so, anyway. so uh, it was fun, it was fun. It was great because we had a screening organized by... We do this every three months. Uh, it's called Nasha Premier Night where we screen an old movie or a retro movie in a, in a single screen. Mm. So we do it at Deepak Cinema uh, and it's wonderful, man, because we've screened Namak Halal, Amar Akbar Anthony, Dawn, oh, wow. most recently Jane Bido Yaro. So it's great. And the only way you can come to the screening is if you win these golden passes. So you can't buy it, you know, and I think that's what makes the experience because ultimately uh, we're all in the, we're all in businesses. And I guess you would understand this a lot more than me. It's about creating an experience. Yes. You, if you can buy it, you don't need anyone to Because today we're in the age of money. You know, everybody can buy anything, yeah. But what are you giving them beyond that? And we're giving them this experience. Uh, watch it with the stars is of course amazing. Because when Amir was, Amir actually watched the entire film with my listeners. Wow. And that to me was an experience that nobody can buy, right? Uh, similarly, uh, when, you know, one of my favorite actors, Sri Devi, passed on. To me, that was just... I personally felt very uh, dejected because she meant a lot to me. I didn't realize, again, because we take entertainment so lightly, you know. We just say that this is a song, as a nation, we actually frown on entertainment because we think it's, it's something that is not work. And then you realize how much it impacted you because actually, you know, I think one of the biggest films that impacted me was Chalbaz. You know, where mm. there was Anju and Manju. And then I knew I, I was Manju, you know. So I would be the girl who would, you know, probably get drunk and then and bang on Rajni Khan's taxi if he was there. You know, because that was who I was. And to me, I realized that Sri Devi mm. was a feminist without even questioning it. You know, she did those roles constantly. And today we talk a lot, now nah, feminism and all. It's become a bad word because the way people just throw it around. But what is it? It is giving and accepting Sri Devi. That's feminism. It's beautiful. So if you walk at, uh, if anybody goes to Bandra, uh, there's Chapel Road. Yeah. So please walk by Chapel Road. There is the Anarkali, you know, the mural painting of Anarkali and Salim. And right next to that, this amazing artist called Ranjit Daya has, you know, at our request, painted Sri Devi. Oh. And it's a very fantastic mural. And I think it's great for even art in our city because that's another thing that it does. We do not care about our city. Yeah. You know, in terms of like, we go, we travel, we're all well-traveled people. We go abroad and we pay so much money to go to their museums. And I feel really bad because I, have, I know for a fact that none of us really have gone to our museum. And to me, that is terrible. Uh, so can we beautify our own city? 
Uh, and this was actually the bigger thing is about how we can make Mumbai mm. beautiful. Beautiful. So. Okay. Quick gun, Sam. One witty answer. Why? Shahrukh or Salman? Shahrukh. Shahrukh. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Always. <laughs> Rihanna or Beyonce? Beyonce. Why? Because Beyonce beats people up. Rihanna got beat up. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Tom Hanks or Tom Cruise? <gasps> That's hard. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Why? Because Tom Cruise, after I don't like cute boys. Okay. <laughs> okay. Take care. No. Eighties pop or eighties rock? Eighties <gasps> pop. Eighties pop. Okay. Total Madonna baby. Total yeah. Madonna. Okay. Social media. Which platform you're comfortable with, and how do you use this? Instagram name? is my mother, father, brother, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram is my everything. Like I live on Instagram. I'm very guilty. LinkedIn, your top tip. I'm terrible at LinkedIn because मुझे समझ में it's a privilege to be honest. If you don't need to be on LinkedIn and people still know you, <laughs> you're doing something right. <laughs> All the speakers agree on that, no? Yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? Thank God I have a little bit of a public profile. वरना मैं मैं LinkedIn से fail हो जाती. कोई मुझे जानता भी नहीं फिर. Twitter. I used to love Twitter. Mm. I've been on Twitter. Actually, joined Twitter ten years ago, and it was my no nine years ago. It mm. was my ninth year anniversary on Twitter, like last week. But I think over the last couple of uh, years, Twitter has become such a negative space yeah. that I'm scared of it. So, and I'm you know, and I don't like trolling, Baba. You know, people think that people who are on social media are these trolling champions, or you can you can give jawabs and all. I am a very non-confrontational mm. person. I don't like it. Okay. Hobbies and family. Hobbies. Ah, oh, you know when you do what you love, this hobby thing to never happens. happens uh, so I'm constantly doing because the social media could be a hobby, but it's also my job. And movie yeah. watching is also a hobby and a job. And I read also and I meet people also. So it's great because my hobbies and jobs are just this beautiful thing. Yeah. Wonderful. You know seven languages. <laughs> I can't claim that I know. This is why you don't go to LinkedIn or <laughs> resumes. Um, uh, I've learned a bit of Spanish because I really wanted to, and I and strangely, and you'll not believe one of the three three things that I graduated in uh, was psychology, English literature, and hold your breath, French literature. Oh my God! <laughs> I don't know how because I can't talk French. Okay. So if someone says something in French to me, I'll just be like, "Huh? That was too fast." But I could write, mm. and I think that was very sim uh, symptomatic of the sort of rote, uh, not rote, but the sort of like exam-driven sort of system we had, because I don't remember anything. Neither do I. Okay, take it. Tell us about your family. And I didn't fail, guys. I did really well. <laughs> I mean, I'm also South Indian, okay? So. <laughs> Tell us about uh, your family. I live with my mom and my brother. Uh, and uh, yeah, my mum. I always say this: if you think I'm fun, you should meet my mother. And everyone's yeah, you've met my mother, and she's already your Facebook friend, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, my, I'm just a pale shadow of my mum. Uh, she's probably the reason why I am this person. Uh, my father and my mother, of course, both of them. My father's no more, uh, but she is literally the one who's left me. Both of them with the curiosity for the world. Uh, they've never ever told me to shun a person or an experience, uh, and I think that openness to trying things and to understanding how everything works. Comes from them. Uh, the love for language comes from them, and definitely the, lo the love of people. Because even though radio is a very isolated medium, because you could just be you in the studio, right? But I am not that person because I enjoy going and meeting people. So where do you see yourself two years from now? Huh? Only two years, not five years. Two not years, ah? Uh, two years. Two years. I, I don't know. Like at the same radio? place, honestly. Radio? I would okay. Here's what yeah. I deal. Yeah. Uh, what my deal with. I've been doing radio for twelve years now, and if I had the chance to do the same thing for the rest of my life, every morning, I would do it without a hitch. Wow. And honestly, that's it's. It would be my privilege to do that. Like so, I I really love doing the, what I do. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Rohini. It was great Thank fun you. interviewing you. Thank you so much. I hope. I was worthy of being the first radio jockey, huh? yeah. Huh? Rohini, how will you close this evening in your style? Wow. Okay. Uh, should I look in the camera or just do it for everybody else? 
uh, 91.9 FM Radio Nasha par up next is crime master go go you know how it goes he come come and i go go <laughs> have a jagas morning yeah so, uh, uh, i am radio ki heroine so yeah yeah that's my monica i'm radio ki heroine which is like a a version of heroine uh, rohini yeah so wow. I want this mug so badly. I've been looking at this mug. I love this mug. Yeah, it's got my mug. Mug shot. Yeah, it's a mug shot. Yes.